This weekend, LA rapper Nipsey Hussle was shot and killed outside of his clothing store in LA. And joining the show now to break down this terrible situation, writer for The Undefeated, David Dennis Jr. David, welcome back to The Damage Report. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, so you you recently wrote about your uh, your immediate reactions and then your thoughts about this uh, this senseless murder. Uh, when you first found out, um, how did you feel? Well, I, I was devastated. I was shocked. Um, you know, Nipsey Hussle is somebody. Uh, you know, my background is in uh, hip hop journalism. He's somebody I followed uh, for about more than 10 years uh, just about and you know I've known his music but more than that I've known uh, his uh, you know contribution to his community his business acumen the stuff he was doing for Crenshaw so it seemed uh, you know it was a shock uh, for sure and so you wrote in your piece there was a line uh, we lost more than a rapper someday Sunday we lost someone who loved us can you uh, explain that yeah so Nipsey Hussle uh, made you know, he had a successful rap career. He made tons of money. Uh, he went out for, uh, you know, business ventures uh, for himself that that were very lucrative and sort of changed the music industry. But, you know, it seemed like almost every dollar he made, he pumped back into his community. Uh, he was known for, uh, you know, he built schools. He was uh, always uh, giving uh, to kids in the area. He was trying, he was paying for funerals, paying for shoes. Uh, he had built a co-op space. Uh, in the area for STEM research and for um, you know co-work areas, he was investing in real estate. You know, he seemed to be uh, you know sort of perfecting the blueprint of what we want from celebrities uh, in terms of giving back to their communities. Uh, you know, perpetuating the things that we've seen um, celebrities do in the past, but he was doing it in in some really sort of revolutionary, uh, meaningful ways. Yeah, it, it's amazing. So uh, I had not been familiar with him or his work before this. And so I've been sort of learning about him and his life since it happened. And it seems like, obviously, you know, you, you tend to hear the good stuff, but it seems like everybody who interacted with him had an amazing experience, including, I mean, look, there's some famous people and all that, but just regular people that interacted with him, uh, you know, as he was working at his shop and things like that. And, uh, and that, that work that you were describing there uh, apparently was continuing right up until when he died. He had a meeting planned with the LAPD to talk about uh, gang violence. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the Crenshaw area is, uh, you know, struggling uh, with uh, gang violence, as are many different places in the country. And so he had sort of formed um, an alliance with uh, different members of the community and the LAPD in order to sort of curb some of that gang violence that was going on and and sort of build some programs that would sort of help uh, the kids in that area. And that was planned literally, uh, you know, 24 hours uh, after he died. So uh, just one or two more quick questions. So in your piece, you talked about uh, an MIT study that said that effectively, if, you, if you're born into poverty and you want to escape it, you need to have a period of two decades of absolutely everything working out for you, you know, no transgressions of any sort. And in your article, you, one of the quotes you have is that Nipsey escaped poverty, but he couldn't escape America. What, what did you mean by that? Yeah, so the MIT study was essentially looking at things from a financial perspective. Like if you need to not ever default on any loans or make any bad business decisions in order to you know, move up the ladder financially, and you need two decades of that. But I think it's it goes a little bit deeper for African Americans, especially people who are in impoverished neighborhoods like Nipsey came from. I mean, the past is sort of always there. Uh, coming for you no matter what. And so it, it appears as though this was an altercation with somebody um, at the store who may have come from, you know, that that past. And you look at, you know, a lot of uh, famous uh, black folks, for, you know, who just have to deal with that stuff. I mean, you look at Meek Mill, who uh, is fighting uh, jail and fighting charges from things he did when he was 19. So you have to sort of go beyond financial perfection and, uh, you know, to really uh, escape and Nipsey also was still a product of America and America does not uh, is not really a place for uh, black folks and definitely not black you know rich uh, rich black people. So uh, my last question for people who want to help keep his memory and his legacy alive, uh, what would your advice be for them? Well, my advice would be to uh, you know live as he lived. I don't know if you saw TMZ this morning reported that he 
uh, was at the store because he was providing clothes for somebody who had just gotten out of jail for um, after being in jail for 20 years. So that's why he was there in the first place. And, you know, he was giving back up until the moment that he died. And I think that that is his legacy. And I think that's what we can do uh, carrying forward. We can always remember where we came from. Don't be scared of the places we came from. Give back and, uh, you know, have hope and faith in the, in the people who, who you were raised around. David Dennis Jr., thank you as always for joining us. We really appreciate your perspective and what, what you said about Nipsey Hussle. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.